Hi, welcome to another episode of The Bible Says This, What Say You? I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden, Sr., pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. The Bible says in Psalms 33, verse 4 and the A clause, for the word of the Lord is right. I am excited today. I have special guests with me today, a young lady whom I admire. She is a tremendous woman of God. She's a tremendous wife and mother. And I'm just excited about her being with me today to talk to you about some things that we want to bring before you. I often tell people that she's the preacher in our family. It is my firstborn, my daughter, Crystal Amachukwu. Uh, she's with me today, this missionary, this woman of God whom the Lord used uses mightily. And uh, I'm so excited, Crystal, to have you with me today. Tell the audience a little bit about you. Tell them who you are. Well, hello, and I'm glad to be here with my father, Bishop Patrick L. Witten Sr. I'm so excited just to be able to share with you. Certainly, my father is the preacher in the family, and I'm 34 years old. I'm still a, a, a daddy's girl. I'll probably always be one. But I'm glad to be here. I am um, Went to college at North Carolina State University uh, to their business school and did grad school at UNC Chapel Hill. I am married uh, to the awesome youth pastor John Amanchuka. We have two beautiful children, four and six years old. I have been saved for 20 years. Praise uh, God. I came up in church all of my life, but I remember when I was 14 years old when I seriously made the commitment to give my life to Christ, and I have been living for the Lord ever since. And I'm just so glad to be able to say that God is good, God is faithful. Everything he's told me he would do, he's done it in my life. Hallelujah. And I'm glad to Hallelujah. be here today. You know, uh, one of the things I tell people is that when you accepted the Lord, you really accepted the Lord. I mean, uh, you bought this Christian thing, mm -hmm. hook, line, and sinker, and just jumped in with both feet. I, 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 I brag about this, that when, uh, telling your business a little bit, but when she walked the aisle, I'm a proud father. When she walked the aisle on her wedding day and just married to a tremendous man, yes, tremendous sir. man of God, yes, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't have a finer son-in-law. But when you walk the aisle with that white dress on, I will never forget. Yes, sir. It was not symbolic. It was not meaningless. It was not symbolism over substance. It was the truth mm -hmm. because you saved yourself and look at what the Lord has done. Yes, and I'm so excited. Uh, one of the things I've always been excited about is how much you how much you love Jesus. Yes, sir. Well, the Lord is good. Um, we say in church all the time, who wouldn't serve a God like this? And if you know him, you know that that is a very true statement. Um, coming up in the home mm -hmm. with mom and dad, with Bishop and First Lady, it was so easy to love the Lord. They loved us. Um, they are, they were and still are just regular people. Um, and they would love us and talk to us about the word of God, pray with us. But we were able to be children we were, when we were children. And as we grew older, we were able to uh, come into those new responsibilities and expectations. And they lived the godly life in front of us. And so why not serve the God of the Bible? This is the best kind of life. Truly, I'm like you and Andre Crouch. I love living this kind of life. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, She's here today to help me with a story that I want to talk to you about. Now, we know that the Bible says in Psalms uh, 118, actually 119 and verse 89, it says, forever the word of the Lord is settled in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, the good thing about the Bible is the word of God doesn't evolve. The word of God uh, hasn't come to be. The word of God is settled. And uh, I think it's right for us to stand on the settled word of the Lord. Now, Krista, you brought to my attention uh, that, uh, that the word of the Lord in the church has been, uh, uh, someone thought it necessary to apologize for the church. And I want to read uh, this apology. It, it, it reads as follows. By the way, this was published in the Griot Post on November the 18th. I want to apologize for all the hurtful and painful things that have been said about people in the church that have been talented and gifted and musical that we've used and we've embarrassed and all the other horrible crap that we've done. End of quote, said Franklin, quote, we have not treated them like people. We're talking about human beings, men and women that God has created, end of quote. 
The singer went on to lament, to lament the twisted interpretations of the Bible, saying some Christians have turned it into a, quote, homophobic manual, end of quote. Quote, the Bible is not a book that's an attack on, and you know I don't call them gay, uh, uh, people. Uh, Franklin added, it's not a book written to attack, I don't call them gay, People. And you know why I don't? Because gay means happy, upbeat, socially acceptable. And also, my friends, I'm not going to participate in the charade. The word gay was selected by those who want to change our thinking on the sin of homosexuality and to get a more a euphemistic term to get, cause us to embrace a term that will disarm us. And the word that they settled on was the word gay. So he says uh, the Bible is not a book written to attack a uh, homosexual people. Uh, it is horrible that we have made it where the Bible is a homophobic manual. That's not what the Bible is. I mean, you want to talk about things that God gets at pride and jealousy and envy and arrogance. But we also see a uh, God sending his son to save us all because we're all straight, homosexual, I don't call them gay, or whatever, lost and in need of a savior. And there's room at the cross for all of us, end of quote. Again, this was the Griot Post, posted uh, November the 18th. Crystal, what about this? Well, when I saw this ar article, I was shocked. Um, I heard that he did a radio interview, and these were some of the things that he had to say. And I'm very familiar with gospel music. Um, Kirk Franken is an awesome gospel music oh, artist. Yeah. And I have come up in the black church all of my life. And we know that there is a presence of people who are struggling with the spirit of perversion. I also do not call them G-A-Y. But um, we know that those people are in the church. And we also do know that there are a lot of those people who are in our choirs, who are gifted, who are, who are musical, and who are talented. And from what I have seen, the church, specifically the black church, has been a platform for these individuals. The church has been a faithful and loyal audience. So to hear someone say that the church has used them and embarrassed them and done all kinds of horrible crap, I'm at a loss to figure out what kinds of things he's speaking of. Um, as a member of the church, not the Church of God in Christ, but as a saint, I take attacks on the church very personally. And to hear someone make a blanket statement to accuse the church of mistreating certain people, um, I find that quite disconcerting. To talk about gospel music artists or uh, LGBT persons who are gifted and talented in the church. We know that these are persons who are uh, musical, uh, musical artists um, and the church buys their albums. Uh, outside of the church, there really isn't a market for some of these individuals. We're talking about men who are, for the most part, very feminine of the people he's speaking of. Um, you can't sing R&B or country or hip hop and be that type of person. The church has welcomed these individuals buys their albums. The church supports Sunday Best. And if you watch Sunday, Sunday Best, you know that you're going to see a lot of men and women with some quite questionable habits um, that make you wonder about their lifestyles. Um, not only that, but the church not only buys the albums, supports the radio stations, but the church uh, invites them to come and sing in person. Um, we'll, we'll buy their airplane ticket, put them up in a hotel. Um, receive their rider of all kinds of requirements of what kind of musical instruments they have to have. Um, we'll pay them an honorarium. It's interesting how you listen to 103.9 in the morning and there is a lot that's said about how much preachers are paid uh, to preach and to pray and to sing. But gospel music artists, when you bring them to your church, they may sing 15 minutes and you may have to pay them upwards of $2,000. Five. Absolutely. And so and the church has done this for many years and there is absolutely no market for this outside of the church. None whatsoever. Um, you don't see a lot of our even uh, celebration of gospel that is on BET. Uh, in recent years, there have been just as many R&B artists who perform on these shows as gospel artists. Outside of the church, there would not be a platform for some of these people. Now, inside of the church, uh, some of the people he's talking about are paid, I repeat, paid 
ministers of music, paid musicians who are given a platform. So what horrible has the church done? The church has been a sounding board. There was a gospel artist uh, formerly known by toe name. He was a gospel artist and he came out as a homosexual. He left the gospel, gospel music field and he said that he was going to reemerge as a hip hop or, or secular artist, excuse me, B. Slade. You probably haven't heard of B. Slade because B. Slade doesn't have a platform. There is no platform for that kind of individual. Should the church do that, that's another recording, that's another conversation. But has the church been abusive and dismissive of the, of the people that Kurt Franken is talking about? Absolutely not. In fact, we have been loyal and supportive. Now, it's interesting and ironic that he says that many have used the Bible as a homophobic manual. Because I would say that a precious few preachers preach against homosexuality and lesbianism at all. So who are these individuals that he is talking about? I want to say that the only people that I can think of in the church who are mistreating talented, gifted individuals who may be struggling with the spirit of perversion or a part of the LGBT community, to be very honest with you, I think the only people who may be doing any of that are people who are a part of that community. I think about the late, great Billy Preston, who was turned out by a homosexual preacher. That is his story. That's his story. I think about all the young men and women who have been turned out in the church. Right. I think about all the stories of preachers who have molested young boys. Right. Those are the kinds of horrible things and horrible crap that somebody should be apologizing for. But to apologize by saying the Bible says what it says, that's not abuse, that's standing on truth. That's right, that's right. So it's very important that we know in the word of God in Matthew 7 and 21, Jesus himself said that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will, will enter into the kingdom. He said that there will be many who say, I cast out demons in your name. We preached and prophesied in your name. But he said that he himself is going to say to those individuals, I never knew you. It is important for all of us who are serving in the kingdom of God, who are singing in church, who are leading the choir, who are preaching, preaching, ushering, no matter what you're doing. It's important for us to know that we cannot work our way into God's kingdom. No matter how we're serving, no matter what we're doing, that does not guarantee that we will be accepted by Jesus Christ. So the notion that people will use you, it's important that we understand that to a certain extent, Jesus Christ himself will use us because he will allow us to do what we're doing, but we, he may still hear us, we may still hear him say, I never mm. knew you. Wow. So it's so Powerful. important that we obey God and obey God's word. And that is the only thing that is going to give us the safety to know that we will be received by God and man. What a powerful, powerful, powerful truth that, 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 that you're telling. And, and, and I think that is a, a point that bears being made that, uh, uh, that the church is actually being good to these people. Uh, in, in most cases, they never go to civic centers. In most cases, they, they don't go to civic centers or freestanding arenas because the truth is they don't draw their own crowd. We, we bring them in and pay them and basically what you hear is go to track one or track two and 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 in most cases in most conferences the musical guest the artist is the highest paid person he's paid more than Absolutely. the preacher Absolutely. and very Absolutely. few of them actually conduct what I call true worship because here's the truth they won't come mm -hmm. unless you guarantee uh, their contract. They don't sing for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. their, their ministry has become their business, which is the doctrine of Balaam. Now, as we close this, uh, let me, I, I also, uh, I, I just got asked this question. Who ordained Kurt Franklin to apologize for the church? Now, come on, Kurt. You are a singer. Okay? A talented one. That that song, there's God, there's no one like you. Bump, 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 bump. Man, it is beautiful. Your writing ability and production quality is amazing. But you need to stick to that. You're not in a position to apologize for the church. And you gave no example, uh, Kurt, of any scripture that has been twisted. Uh, what crap, sir, are you talking about? 
Uh, how is the Bible a homophobic man manual? Are you homophobic if you declare homosexuality to be sin? Mm -hmm. Now, if declaring homosexuality sin, then the Bible is homophobic. If saying that people who participate in this uh, lifestyle that shortens the lifespan of those who participate in it, as a matter of fact, it has been determined on average the homosexual male lives 20 years less than his heterosexual counterpart his counterpart, excuse me, and uh, uh, every time I see the, uh, the uh, commercials about uh, uh, smoking and encouraging people to quit smoking, you know, smoking shaves about 13 years off the lifespan. Homosexuality uh, shaves about 20 years off the uh, human lifespan. So uh, homosexuality is worse for you than smoking is. But back to the scriptures. Now, was, was Moses being homophobic when he said, uh, thou shall not lay with mankind, thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. So is Leviticus, uh, Kurt Franklin, homophobic? Or was the Apostle Paul being homophobic when he declared uh, that men would leave the natural use of the woman? It says this in Romans 1 26, for this cause God gave them up to vile affections. For a man to want to have sex, uh, Kurt, with a man that want to, if a man is bi-curious, if a woman wants to have sex with a woman, even if they haven't done it, if they want to, that affection, according to the scripture, is a vile affection. Is this uh, an example of being homophobic? Am I, sir, twisting the scripture or am I properly interpreting the scripture? How would you, Kurt Franklin, interpret uh, uh, the word vile? It says, for this cause God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise the men leaving the natural use of the woman burning in their lusts one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly. Now, Brother Kurt, is this homophobia or is this God's truth? Am I twisting the scripture, Kurt, or am I properly reading the scripture? Sir, I hold that you sound like those whom Peter and Jude warned us of. He warned us of uh, men who would privately slip into the church in the last days and who would bring in damnable heresies, who would slip in almost unaware. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who shall privately bring in damnable heresies and uh, even denying the Lord that bought them. Kurt, the Lord made you somebody. The Lord raised you up and look at what you are doing. And the Bible speaks about these people in verse uh, two of second Peter chapter two. It says, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, pernicious, destructive ways by reason of whom the way of truth, biblical Christianity, the way of truth, the gospel shall be evil spoken of. Kurt, this apology is you, sir, speaking evil of the word of God. Now, uh, call me, write me. I invite you, I'll come on your show or you can come on mine. I'll meet you anywhere at my own expense and we'll debate this. Stick to singing or, sir, read the Bible. Read the Bible and uh, find out what the scripture says and do what the Bible says. And have there been abuses? Uh, there, 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 there have been. I, I believe this. I believe, and, and my daughter alluded to it, and she said that would be a, a, another show, and she's so right. I believe one of the problems in the church is that we've been much too lenient. Uh, to these uh, uh, perverts. We've been much too lenient. We have over and over and over sacrificed integrity, sacrificed character, and sacrificed holiness, Kurt, for 
people who are gifted, That's right. uh, talented, That's right. and musical. Mm -hmm. What about holy? That's right. What about godly? What about straight? I think, Kurt, that bottom basement requirement for any man in the kingdom is that he be straight. I think that the gospel music music industry has been the gateway, has been the chief uh, conspirator, the chief contributor of turning our young boys and uh, our young girls out. Everybody knows that the, the adage in the in the in the church world is if you're having a conference and you want to make sure that you don't bring in a homosexual male singer, you have to invite a woman mm -hmm. to come and be your musical guest. Now, that's some tough talk. And I'm by no means in, in, indicting all of the men who sing gospel. But I sure am indicting most of them because most of these guys are punks. And to be honest with you, Kurt. You sound like one. You sound like you bent over and grabbed your ankles and just, you know, you just grinned and bored to, to say such a thing. Now, this is what the Bible says. What say you?